Thanks, uh, Marisa. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I don't look that old, like 15 years and so on. Uh, I hope most of you will agree. I'm still pretty young. Uh, I'm not here to talk a lot about uh, GitHub uh, specifically. I think the last time I had to code was some about 15 years back as well, uh, in year 2003. What I do now is actually run uh, IT projects. So I'm here to share a bit more about my experience of running some of the large projects that we have recently concluded with a great experience and great learning. Uh, of course, GitHub was a part of uh, that journey as well. I'm going to talk about how did we actually drive some of the very, very large and very unique uh, digital transformation project. Uh, just a quick introduction to start with, uh, you know, uh, about the organization that I represent, uh, CRAS. Uh, it's a pretty young organization. We are a system integrator. We have a few offerings around enterprise content management, workflow and business process automation, enterprise charts, reporting analytics that everyone talks about, and definitely on the developer collaboration solutions. We are a young company, uh, highly agile. Uh, that's what I think the, the today's world demands. You can't just be rigid if you're, if you're going to survive. So uh, that's a pretty brief about us. Uh, to deliver solutions, we partner with a few organizations. You can see most of the logos in your screen. Uh, we love open source. If you start with uh, our uh, offerings, start with Alfresco, which is a digital business platform. Uh, close to 10 years old in the market now, offers you uh, the content management, workflow automation, machine learning, enterprises embedded in, 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 in all in one. We're happy to be partnered with GitHub uh, to manage all of our projects. Uh, we're partnered with MariaDB, which is a fork of MySQL, and I would say pretty popular, making a lot of noises in the market. Uh, kicking out, uh, I would say, uh, the commercial products uh, assays. I don't want to name you guys uh, pretty smart to know. Uh, FSoft uh, Enterprise Capture Solution, uh, again, open source. Uh, we also partner with IBM uh, for their open source journey. They have made uh, their, the, even, their, and even their hardware platform open source. So we talk about open power, uh, Linux on power. So we partner with them from the infra standpoint. And finally, uh, you know, we partner with a company called FASU, which actually offers the uh, digital rights management solution to actually uh, secure uh, the infrastructure that we actually build around the content and information management. Some of the customers that we serve in Singapore, in Malaysia, in the region, in National Library Board, Fuji Xerox, Brother, uh, the printer company, uh, Ong & Ong, which is a property company. Our biggest customer on your right side of your screen is Mampo, which is actually a counterpart of GovTech in Singapore. So they manage IT for government of Malaysia. KTM, the train guys in Malaysia, there are a lot of universities that we actually work with. So these are some of the customers that we work with. And yeah, we are located here in Singapore as well as in Malaysia physically, and we serve customers in the region. So let me come on to the subject that uh, we're going to talk about and my experience that I'm going to share today. Uh, so the client that we're working with uh, for the past couple of years is actually a central government agency for government of Malaysia, as I said. It's a counterpart of GovTech in Singapore. I can't name it because of obvious reasons. You guys may guess who is it. Uh, their job is basically to uh, be a catalyst for change in the administration, administration management. Everyone talks about e-governance today. No more, it's going to be uh, the manual way of doing it. So they are basically the leader uh, in developing the ICT for the public sector enterprises. So it's not only related to one specific government agency or ministry, but they drive innovation, they drive ICT in, uh, in, in Malaysia. And they also act as a consultant to uh, you know, the public sector organizations. They facilitate the modernization, they bring in technology, facilitate e-governance, and they also do have you know, the research uh, organizations within uh, to actually look for the better solutions, the open source uh, focus, and uh, so on. So the challenge that uh, the organization uh, faced was basically to how to drive the digital transformation in a public sector organization. Now that can be really painful to actually drive change in a public sector organization. It's easier, I would say, in a commercial organization. People are ready to change, willing to change, but uh, not specifically in the public sector organization. So it's, we talk about the people, process, and technology. They have the technology, they possibly have the access to the tools, but they're going to change people, they're going to change the processes as well. So they were tasked to basically drive or to actually design a digital transformation roadmap for the entire government of Malaysia and ensure that the different arms of the government or the public sector actually talk to each other, they collaborate digitally. 
The challenge that they, they were faced was that there was lack of standard processes. There's a lot of papers flowing around. Uh, agencies, ministries are working in a very layman, in a old fashioned 70s, 80s era. Nobody's following the processes. Lack of appeal to the electronic systems. Uh, public sector employees hired 30 years back, don't really want to change. So there is a huge resistance that they were faced with. High cost of proprietary technologies. There are tools and you know, uh, technology available in the market, but uh, there is a cost attached to the proprietary technologies that they faced. It runs in a few hundred millions of dollars. Silo data environment in each agencies, uh, you got to convince the public sector organizations to actually share data. And sometimes, because of obvious reasons, they may not be actually willing to. So there are silos and there is a technology skill gap on what fits. And uh, as I heard one of the speaker uh, before, there's no one size fits all approach. So uh, uh, each agency you know, runs their own platform, runs their own technology. How did we solve it? Uh, pretty simple, I'll come on how did we embark on it. What we did is actually deployed a multi-tenant digital business platform based on the technology that I shared earlier from Alfresco which is actually an enterprise content management repository with workflow and business process automation and an enterprise search engine reporting and analytics capabilities built into it. So we actually deployed a multi-tenant platform and we onboarded all agencies onto a single platform. It's actually known as uh, DDMS. This is how the government actually calls it, Digital uh, Document Management System. And it also complies to the national uh, key economics areas which the government was actually pursuing. Uh, content infrastructure, and it's one of the six entry point projects for government of Malaysia. That means this is one of the sixth biggest project that the government is actually pursuing in actually enabling a single platform for all public sector organizations to share, manage, and collaborate around all the information that the agency is actually uh, pursuing. And the goal is to actually achieve uh, uh, the, the paperless uh, government. So it was a multi-stakeholder uh, project that, uh, uh, that we had. So there were various arms of the government we were actually involved into it. So we came in as a subject matter expert, as a technology guy, system integrator, to basically provide a technology solution. Our client, which is, as I said, is the counterpart of GovTech, actually brought in their uh, expertise in terms of licensing with the various arms and wings of the government. We had a National Archive of Malaysia, which was actually driving the processes, the standards, the principles that they were bringing in. We had a security arm of the government, which was actually laying down the security principles. And then we had uh, the Prime Minister Office of Malaysia itself actually monitoring the entire project progress, which is actually going to impact the entire e-governance journey for government of Malaysia. So uh, we deployed the solution and some of the, the key uh, factors or the key facts that we have today, that this is an online system. It's a one of a kind, uh, unique system. And uh, let me give you some of the, the statistics. We started off uh, way back in 2015. In September 2016, we went live with the solution. We onboarded one agency with 1,000 users. That's what we started off as a pilot, as a baby step that we actually took about one and a half year back. Where do we stand today in one and a half year? We are talking about 65 agencies onto a single platform. We're talking about 48,000 users in a central repository and it's entirely running on the open source stack as we actually talk about. It also complies to the, st the global standards, which we uh, refer to as uh, ISO 16175, which complies, which is actually laying down the information governance principle in any organization, be it public sector or financial organization. So how do you actually manage electronic information and how do you capture, manage, store, disseminate, and dispose uh, at the end? So it actually caters to the entire life cycle of information governance from end to end, and it follows the ISO principles uh, in there. And as I mentioned, this is one of a kind of a project in the world. There has never been a project like this before where multiple wings and arms of government are actually using a centralized repository 
to manage and collaborate around the information. There have been silos, including Singapore. There have been silos, you know, every, every, every ministry, every agency actually uses their own information management system. And if the data has to be transmitted, mostly it's actually done via APIs. But it's never, there has never been a approach or there has never been an idea to actually create a single repository of all the government information on a central platform, which is secure enough, which is actually catering to all the principles, all the standards like ISO, also, you know, uh, ISO 27001 from a security standpoint. So that's been the experience. So what are the learnings from this journey? We crafted a vision. Never, nobody has done it before. It was never thought about as well. It doesn't exist even today except what we have done. So we had a vision. We followed up with action. It took about an year and a half, close to 18 months, to actually bring all the stakeholders on board to the idea. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of skepticism about how secure the system is going to be. Is there going to be a data a security compromisation which is going to happen? What if the system is going to get hacked? Some of the smart developers in the room possibly write some, some code to actually get some of the data from the system and so on. So it, took, it was a long journey, one and a half year, to actually craft a vision. But we followed up with the action. We put in all the necessary tools that were available to us. So. We embarked on open source uh, to actually keep it very cost effective for the government, very competitive, very appealing. And definitely there were turbulence you know, uh, on, on, on the way. It wasn't an easy journey. Crafting a vision itself, convincing all the stakeholders to actually come on board to such a unique and one of a kind system was definitely a, a challenge. And as we progressed along the way, it was definitely a challenge to even craft such an architecture to actually put it in place, which is secure, which is scalable, and which is future ready. So there was turbulence on, on, uh, on the way which we uh, successfully you know, overcome. We kept it simple. We did not really make it complicated. Because we had to deal with 48,000 users as on today. We started off with 1,000 users. We are standing at 48,000 users today. And the future for this project is by end of 2020, the target is to reach 250,000 users for a single repository. Hopefully by end of 2030, it's going to be 1.6 million government users across Malaysia. That's the target. That's the goal. That's the destination that we have in mind. So we have to keep it simple. We have to manage the change. If we don't keep it simple, we won't be able to manage the change because it's I think humanly still impossible to actually manage 1.6 million people's expectations from a single system. So we kept it very simple. And we are not resting yet. We're dreaming big. There are going to be more use cases which are actually going to come in this platform, just to share with you. At the moment, it's pretty much information sharing and collaboration. There is going to be business process, process automation around it. The system is going to get connected with the Open Data Initiative of Government of Malaysia, where certain information will actually be post out for the public consumption, etc. So we are not resting; we are still dreaming big about it. So that's been the learning for past, I would say, about three years now. So one and a half to craft a vision, and another one and a half year to actually put it in action and execution. As part of our journey, of course, GitHub was with us. Uh, you know, we have the luxury to get the GitHub Enterprise uh, complimentary license that we get. So we are running our own uh, uh, on-premise uh, GitHub server for our development team to actually collaborate and support the massive customization tasks that we were actually uh, do it, and a lot of new releases that we actually uh, had, to, had to deal with. So we are using uh, all possible features of GitHub, be it you know, using it as a repository to manage our codes, manage the release, et cetera or whether we talk about you know, uh, doing the issue management whenever the testing team identifies any bug and you know, using the workflow basically to, to assign it to the developers and you know, work, on the, work on the next uh, release uh, and the build. And uh, it's also helping us to do some you know, uh, quick uh, uh, monitoring of the developer tasks that we have so we, have, we, can, we can actually be on, on the track. Just to share a bit more, uh, 
very recently. Uh, we also have actually deployed uh, GitHub, or we had our uh, our first uh, you know customer in uh, in Malaysia uh, for GitHub uh, in, in in the financial industry, uh, which is uh, uh, the largest bank uh, in Malaysia. Uh, they have been using uh, RTC for uh, quite long now. It's been I think about uh, five or six years that they've been actually using uh, IBM RTC. And just about uh, a month back, uh, we have actually decided to, they have decided to actually move on to, to GitHub. There were certain challenges that they were faced with, so that's been a learning as well. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, they have a distributed team, they run uh, a few businesses in, in financial industry, they have a bank, they, they own an insurance company, they have uh, a back office, you know, uh, development team in, in, in India, so the team is uh, spread across. So it was a bit of challenge for them to uh, actually roll out RTC from a cost standpoint. Uh, uh, RTC also had a bit of challenge in terms of supporting the new technologies which uh, uh, the, the bank is actually embarking on, uh, be it on the mobility, IoT, artificial intelligence, and so on. And it was a bit rigid in terms of you know, uh, the, the new developer onboarding. So these were some of the challenges that they were faced with. And that's where uh, GitHub actually helped them in providing a cost-effective option compared to, to GitHub, and uh, also supporting all the range of technology that you guys are aware of. GitHub.com you know, supports almost everything, uh, every technology on the, on, the, on the planet, and it's pretty flexible and agile for them. So for them, it was pretty easy to actually do the change management from the, from the RTC to, to GitHub. I think that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, man.